Hey everyone, uh, thank you very much for attending uh, the webinar today on how to fix a hacked Joomla website. Uh, so my name is Ben Martin. Uh, I'm a remediation team lead at Sakuri, uh, and I've been working at Sakuri for uh, three years. And my job is to fix hacked websites, uh, remove malware, and remove websites from uh, blacklists. So uh, just a little bit about me before we get started. Um, I'm from Victoria, BC. Uh, we've got a couple other Sakuri uh, employees that live here in uh, beautiful Victoria as well. And um, I've worked in IT for a total of uh, six years. And uh, after three years of working for Sakuri, I've lost count of the number of websites that uh, I've cleaned. Um, we're not platform specific. Uh, we don't just clean Joomla sites. We also do WordPress, Magento, Drupal, Microsoft, ASP sites. Um, so, you know, if it's hacked and you're our client, we'll figure it out and fix it. Uh, but today's webinar is just going to be about Joomla. <clears throat> so my job isn't just to remove uh, malware from websites, but it's also to identify new strings of malware, uh, identify campaigns and trends in the website security landscape, um, and uh, provide our research team with samples so that we can improve our, our tools. Um, and I've also uh, attended a number of different CMS-related uh, events. Uh, earlier this month, I was at uh, in Vancouver for the Joomla World Conference. So if any of you watching were also in attendance at uh, JoomlaCon, hello again. So I've also broken down the webinar into three sections. Uh, the first is to actually identify that your website has been compromised. Uh, you would be surprised with the number of people that have no idea that their websites were hacked. Uh, I've seen hacks go undetected for several years without the webmaster even knowing. Um, the second uh, section is going to be how to actually find and remove the malicious code from your site. And the third section is going to be what to do after a hack, because um, that's arguably the most important part of, of all three. So let's get started. How can you tell if your website was actually compromised? The most common thing that we see is that your website has been blacklisted by Google or other search engines, or it's been blacklisted by uh, antivirus vendors like Norton or Malwarebytes, and we maintain our own blacklist also. Um, so if you want to check to see if your website is blacklisted, just mosey on down to virustotal.com, uh, type in your web uh, domain name, and then just press enter, and it will go ahead and check your website against a whole bunch of different blacklists. Um, Sometimes uh, websites will be labeled as suspicious or malicious, uh, but if your website is on uh, a blacklist or more than one blacklist, uh, that's a definite sign that something's going wrong with your site. Um, also, it's important to pay attention to what your visitors are saying to, uh, to you. Uh, they might be using a different antivirus program than you are, uh, so they may be getting warnings that you are not actually seeing on your end. So this big red scary warning screen is uh, what it looks like when you try to access uh, your website when it's been blacklisted by Google. So that's a pretty obvious sign that something's going wrong. So the next most common thing that we see is spam. Uh, spam is actually a massive problem in the website security landscape. Um, and there's all sorts of different kinds of spam. And I've seen everything under the sun. Of course, the most common are knockoff pharmaceuticals like Viagra and Cialis and that kind of thing, uh, but also adult content, torrent downloads. I've seen aquaponics, spam, cat food, dog food, hotels, cars. Um, one of the big ones these days is actually essay writing services. Um, apparently, plagiarism is a much bigger problem than it was when I was in college because there's all these companies that will write your essays for you. Uh, and they hack sites to spread their, uh, spread their spam and, and their services. Uh, if Google sees any uh, spam uh, relationship of your website, they're going to issue a this site might be hacked warning. And we'll go into that a little bit more detail later. Mm -hmm. um, but that's going to uh, majorly hit your SEO in, in a negative way. So uh, if you, you want to check to see all of the links that Google is indexing on your website, uh, just go to Google and type in site colon and then your domain name and enter. Google will give you a full list of all of the links that it's indexing on your site. And if, if you see some weird stuff that's not uh, that shouldn't belong there, it's a it's an indication that uh, your website 
could have been uh, compromised. Also, uh, if your website traffic is getting redirected elsewhere, that's a pretty strong indicator that uh, your website has been infected. Um, on the right here, we see uh, an, an, an infected HT access file, which uh, depending on the user agent uh, from the client is going to redirect uh, the visitor to a spammy Russian domain. Um, redirects can have all sorts of different purposes. If an attacker compromises your website, they can redirect traffic to basically wherever they want. Uh, a lot of times that's for going to spam sites, other times it'll, it'll uh, redirect to adult dating websites, and in worst cases it'll redirect your website to malware, ransomware, trojans, really bad stuff. Uh, or a phishing page to try to steal people's PayPal account details or their Gmail account information and that kind of stuff. Um, so if you or your website visitors are uh, strangely ending up on websites that they never intended to go to after they access your website, that's a pretty strong indicator of compromise. Um, also, it may not redirect all traffic. Sometimes, for example, um, we saw a hack last year where only mobile users were getting redirected to adult dating websites. Uh, so again, it's really important to pay attention to what your visitors are, are, are saying about uh, the behavior of your website. If you have weird pop-ups, weird redirects, we, new tabs opening up in your browser, going to obviously bogus pages like the one in this screenshot here, um, you know that's uh, definitely suspicious. It could be caused by a misbehaving advertising network or an injected script somewhere on your website. Also, we have a malware scanning service called SiteCheck, and it's free, and anyone can scan their website for malware. So you can just head on over to sitecheck.sakuri.net and type in your domain name, and uh, it'll scan the website for any known malware. We update SiteCheck very frequently to make sure that it's detecting all of the most common and, and the most recent uh, uh, attacks and, and payloads. Um, SiteCheck's not perfect. It cannot flag things like backdoors and stuff that don't actually display on the website, um, but it's a very useful tool to check to see if your website uh, has, has any uh, known malicious scripts loading on it. And of course, if you go to your website and it looks something like this, that's pretty self-explanatory. Something has definitely gone wrong here. All right, so now what do we do? Um, we've already determined that your website is uh, compromised. How do we actually find the infection, find the malware, and fix the hack? So I'm going to take you through a couple of steps here. Um, what we can do is actually just use the process of elimination um, to go through all of the different uh, aspects of uh, your website. So we can go ahead and check your core files. We can check your uh, template files. We can check your extensions. Uh, your database, your HT access file, any third-party services like ad networks that are loading on your website, and in some cases the actual server itself is the problem. Uh, and if you're wondering uh, what on earth is this uh, image on the right-hand side there, it's actually a nice juicy piece of encrypted PHP malware. So uh, throughout the presentation, I'm going to have as many practical examples as possible. Um, because it's one thing to talk about security, talk about malware, but you have to actually know what the stuff looks like so that you can actually uh, identify, you know, malware when you when you see it. So there's a couple of tools that you're going to need to have under your belt here. Um, I could do an entire webinar just on this slide. There's so much information here, so I'm just going to quickly mention them one by one, just so that you have a basic familiarity with some of the uh, tools that we use. So the first thing, you're definitely going to need a FTP client, um, like FileZilla or Cyberduck if you were using a Mac. Um, this is so we can actually connect to the back end of your server and actually check out the files that, uh, that, that are part of your Joomla core and the template files and stuff. You're also going to want a script blocker. A script blocker is the most important security tool that you can use. What it does is it prevents uh, malicious payloads from executing in your browser. Um, in fact, I would recommend that every single person uses a script blocker all of the time. Uh, in my opinion, it's more important than an antivirus to use um, to, to protect yourself against hacks. 
You will also want to be working in a virtualized environment whenever possible, because we're assuming that your website's compromised, right? So we don't want your browser or your operating system, your computer getting infected too. So uh, you can use a free tool called VirtualBox, and um, that will basically allow you to create a sort of sandbox environment uh, in, in your laptop uh, so that you can visit a malicious website. And even if the uh, sandbox gets infected, it's very unlikely that that malware is going to jump to your actual operating system. I would also recommend a browser extension called uBlock Origin. Uh, we deal with a lot of cases of malvertising and malicious ads, ad networks that have been hacked. Um, and so you're going to want to protect yourself against those. And uBlock Origin actually has a really handy uh, diagnostic console tool that will show you all sorts of different third party scripts that are loading on your website. Um, we will also need to check your database. So PHP my admin if you're using cPanel uh, or adminner if you are if you don't have cPanel we, you can just download uh, a, a PHP script for database management. Um, the, the database is where a lot of spam tends to go um, and so it's very helpful to uh, we're going to need to be able to check in there right. A user agent switcher isn't a bad idea to have either because um, sometimes the malware is only going to execute it and show on the website if a certain user agent, for example, Googlebot um, or you know, search engines and stuff. Uh, it's very common for spam infections for that to be the case. And so sometimes you need to actually switch your user agent in order to trigger the infection and actually see it on your end. Um, OSEC HIDS is a really good uh, server monitoring tool. Um, it's, it will log any modifications to files, um, and it's really useful if you have a VPS or a dedicated server. I would recommend having that installed. And, and that was actually made by our very own Daniel Sid. Uh, support forms are another thing you're going to want to take advantage of. The great thing about open source is that there's a community there to help you with when something goes wrong. And no matter what hack you're dealing with, I guarantee you there's someone else that's already had that same problem before. And in the support forums, there's a community there of people that are there to assist you and to, and to help you. And uh, if your hosting provider supports SSH, then it's, uh, that's going to make it a lot easier for you to clean your hacked site. You're going to need some basic you know, SSH terminal commands experience, um, but uh, it, it makes it a lot easier to, to clean your site if, if you have an SSH connection. So before we begin, please make a backup of your website first. I, have lost count of the number of times I've, I've seen people break their websites when they try to remove the malware themselves because it can get technical and it can get quite difficult. Um, so make a backup of your file structure, make a backup of your database, and um, make sure to store these backups in a secure location. Um, uh, I see a lot of times people store their websites on like the public facing directory of their production servers and that's a really big security risk. Um, so before you make any modifications to your site at all, please make a backup so if something goes wrong you can revert back to it and start again. So all right, let's get to the good stuff. First thing you're going to want to check is the Joomla core files. Um, the modification of Joomla core files is probably the most common thing that we see in terms of where the malware is actually located. Um, we have to remember that the goal of the attackers is to spread malware to as many people, as many website visitors as they can, and the core files is a really good way to do that. Uh, in the example image here, this is actually a hacked uh, index.php file. And it is, uh, we can see the, the code at the bottom of the file is actually legitimate. And the code at the top is they're actually injecting spam into the, into the website. So uh, you're going to want to check the integrity of your core files. And there's a number of ways that you can do that. But one easy way is to download a, a fresh copy of whatever version of Joomla that you're using and uh, compare the website files uh, to the ones that are on your server. If you... Uh, if you have an SSH connection to your website, then you can do that directly on your server. If you don't, then you can actually download your website to your local machine and you can uh, compare the files that way. Now, I'm not talking about comparing them one by one by one. That would take a small eternity, of course. Um, but there are some, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you in the following slides of how you can actually figure out which files are the hacked ones. Um, so if you're really not sure what you can do, 
is um, you can download a copy of the same version of Joomla that you're using and using the FTP client, just replace all of the core files on the server and that will uh, remove any malicious modifications that have been made to them. So this is the default index.php file of Joomla. This is a clean file, there's no malware here. And uh, the index.php file is very commonly infected, but we can also see if you look near close to the bottom, there are two files being called directly, the defines and the framework.php files in the includes directory. And as such, since they're called uh, directly from the index.php file, this is a really common place to store malware. And I'll show you a couple examples. Here is a hacked defines.php file. We can see at the top and the bottom of the file, that's all legitimate, that's what it's supposed to look like. And there's this big, ugly, encrypted uh, chunk in the middle, which is the malware. So if you see a file like this on your uh, Joomla website, uh, just delete the encrypted chunk there in the middle or replace it with uh, a stock clean file. Here is an even more ugly framework.php file. Um, so a lot of the time, as we can see here, a lot of the malware is, is encrypted in, in order to um, you know, kind of obfuscate what the infection is actually doing. And I'll bring your attention to the very top of this file. We can see that there's an opening PHP tag at the very top left, and there's a big chunk of empty space afterwards before the malware actually loads. This malicious code is actually one line. It's all just one big chunk. But what the attacker has done is they've placed the malware way off to the side. So if you were just to open up the file in a regular text editor, it would look normal until you scrolled, 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 scrolled all the way to the right of the file. This is a really common way to hide what they're doing. Um, so if you are using uh, you know, your text editor, make sure that word wrapping is enabled, like in this image here, so that if it's, not, if it's displayed off the screen, it'll bring it back to so it's, it's visible so you can actually see it. Now, it's also really common with malware uh, for them to place the, the malware at the very top of the file uh, because that ensures that the malicious code loads uh, before everything else does and it, it ensures that the payload is delivered. So the thing about Joomla is that unlike some other CMSs, there's three different branches of development with Joomla. There's 1.x, 2.x, and 3.x. Uh, 3.x is the most recent version and it's currently in active development. 1.x and 2.x are no longer getting patches. They're no longer in active development. And we see a lot of people that are stuck in these old versions of Joomla um, because, and they're unable to update to the most recent version. Uh, and this is a really big problem, uh, specifically as it relates to Joomla, um, because uh, some people um, using you know, 1.5.26 or some other uh, old out-of-date version, they may not have the technical expertise or know how to update to the most recent version. They may not have the resources or the money to hire a, a developer to do it for them. And they may not understand why it's such a big risk. Um, so if any of you watching are uh, using an old version of Joomla, I would recommend that you get a game plan to upgrade, uh, migrate to um, 3.x as soon as you're able to. Uh, this is should be your first priority from a from a security standpoint. And if you're absolutely stuck in 1.x or 2.x, there are other options, and I'll go through those at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> so, if you want some guidance on how to migrate your site to the most recent version, uh, these are some good resources to go through from the official Joomla documentation, and uh, you can go there, and it'll walk you through step by step. And unfortunately, it's not a one-click operation. You do have to follow some procedures. Um, but uh, there, there is, you know, documentation out there to help you. So how do you actually tell which files are bad? Um, Joomla has a lot of files. And as I mentioned, going through each of them one by one would take forever. Um, so there are some things that we can do uh, to actually determine where the differences lie. So in this example here, I've downloaded uh, the website files onto my local computer, and uh, I have a fresh copy of Joomla next to it of the same version of example.com. And using this diff command, diff example.com, and then the Joomla directory, it'll spit out the differences between the two. So for example, we see there are some files that only exist in example.com, 
at the top, that uh, bogus zip file and a couple of PHP scripts that aren't supposed to be there. And we can also see in the middle of the image example that there are some differences between the index.php file and it basically just uh, you know prints out the difference between the two and we can see uh, there's some stuff about Googlebot and it's a spam infection basically. So if you want to check to see which files have been recently modified on your server, you can use uh, this, com this command. Uh, if you'll need an SSH connection to the server in order to, to deploy this. Um, but basically this command will tell you which files have been modified within the last 15 days. Now, sometimes you're going to have to go further back than two weeks because what's pretty common is for attackers to place a backdoor on the website and then just wait for a month before they actually execute their, their payload. The reason they do this is because the first thing people do when they've been hacked is to revert to a recent backup. But if the backup is, itself is infected, then the attacker is just going to reinfect the site with the backdoor, right? Um, now, I should mention, don't freak out over any and every modified file. If you've updated your templates or updated Joomla, updated your extensions, these are going to be recently modified files too, right? So just because it's recently modified doesn't mean it's bad, but it's definitely you know suspicious and it needs to be investigated. So next is the template files. This is also an extremely common place for attackers to place malware. Um, we can see in this image here that all of these files have not been modified since 2010 except the index.php file, which is super suspicious, right? Um, and it's almost in, in Joomla, in terms of the template files, it's almost always the index.php file. So that one you're going to want to look out for in particular. Um, you can download a fresh copy of whatever template that you're using, make sure it's the same version, and uh, overwrite the files using your, your FTP client. Now, if you have made any customizations or any modifications to your template files, those changes will be reverted also. So this is why it's so important to make a backup before we begin cleaning the site, right? Um, make sure that you're always obtaining your templates from uh, a, a legitimate source. Um, make sure it's either from the official repository or if you're buying a premium template or something like that, make sure that you're not just downloading a hacked version of it because they always contain malware. So here's an example of an infected index.php file in a Joomla template. Um, that big chunk of script in the middle is the bad stuff. And, and this is called bogus jQuery malware. And it's one of the most common infections that we see with uh, Joomla websites today. We can also see in this image that uh, there's a bogus file that's been placed in the uh, JavaScript directory called stat6ba.php. And any PHP file located in a JavaScript uh, directory is usually bad. So uh, if your website is uh, infected with bogus jQuery, SiteCheck will detect it, and it'll look something like this. So you're also going to want to be careful with your extensions, right? You want to check. <clears throat> sometimes it, it's not as common in Joomla for this to be the case, but sometimes extensions themselves are hacked and are the source of the infection. Uh, so you can, if you're, say, for example, you're seeing spam load on your website or it's getting redirected, you can go into your Joomla administrator panel and disable all of your extensions and then see if the problem still exists. If the problem goes away, then it's one of the extensions. And you can go through them one by one by one to see what the issue is. Uh, more commonly with Joomla, though, the issue uh, with the extension files is that they've had backdoors placed in them. Um, and, you know, there, there's a lot of files to go through. So this is why it's important to use the commands that I showed earlier about checking for recently modified files. Um, again, same thing with templates. You want to make sure that uh, this is your plugins and extensions are coming from a, a legitimate source. Don't use hacked software. Um, and if you're really just not sure what to do, you can download fresh copies of all of your extensions and just rewrite them and overwrite them on, on the server. So here's an example of a backdoor that's been injected into a plugin file in Joomla. Again, very heavily obfuscated, very difficult to see what it's actually doing, but it is a backdoor. All right, we're also going to want to check your database, particularly if you're seeing some spam load there. 
Um, so if you've searched up your website in Google and you see a bunch of Viagra spam or whatever, um, you can hop into your database and just perform a search for Viagra and see if you can find where the spam is located and then you can delete it from there. Um, database spam infections uh, can be really difficult to clean. Um, they are very time consuming because often they've injected thousands of links into your website. Um, and for Joomla, it's most commonly in the Joss underscore content table. Uh, that's where all the content of your posts and stuff and your articles are, are located. Um, sometimes attackers will inject links into existing articles that you have on your website. And other times, if they've been able to access your administrative panel, uh, they'll actually just post a whole bunch of uh, completely bogus articles. Now, this is going to be a, a, a big hit to your SEO because once Google sees this kind of stuff on your website, um, you're all of a sudden associated with uh, the, these spammy domains and your SEO is going to take a hit and it can take a while to uh, get back into Google's uh, good books there. Um, we can see uh, at the top right of uh, this code that it says display none, and that does exactly what it sounds. It makes sure it doesn't display, but the code is still there. So your visitors and yourself, when you're visiting your website, the site will behave normally. Everything will look fine, um, but when Google crawls your website, it sees all this spam, right? The next step that we're gonna check for is your HT access file. Uh, on the right, this is what the default uh, clean Joomla HT access file should look like. Um, if you are getting redirected uh, on your website to, you know, spam sites or exploit landing pages or something like that, the HT access file is going to be one of the first things that you're going to want to check. Um, sometimes the attackers will place the HT access rules way, 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 way at the bottom of the file, so you have to scroll down um, before you can actually see it. Um, but yeah, if your HT access file has been modified recently, you're definitely going to want to check the code inside to see. Uh, what's in there. So this is an example of a hacked uh, Joomla HC access file. Again, a spam infection, very common. We can see it's checking for different search engines. And um, if it's not a search engine, then it doesn't execute. If it is a search engine, then it'll display the spam. So we can see uh, it's referencing index.php, which has been modified. And it's also referencing main.php, which is a totally bogus file that doesn't belong in Joomla anywhere. Now, advertising networks are something that we're going to want to check too. Not just ad networks, but also any third-party content that you're loading on your website. Um, you should treat the integration of third-party scripts on your website with caution, because it's a, it's a server that someone else owns that you can't ensure the security of. And we've seen cases of malvertising where hacked ad networks or bogus ads have distributed Trojans or sometimes even worse, ransomware. Um, so if you do, uh, if you are getting weird redirects and strange behavior uh, on your website, try just disabling your ad networks altogether and see if the problem goes away. Um, and from there on, uh, you can maybe consider using a different network or a different service uh, as a replacement. We see this issue a lot on like a video streaming websites that are using four or five different ad networks, and it can be very difficult to troubleshoot which is the actual culprit. So I would recommend, uh, if you are going to use an ad network on your website, I would re recommend that you uh, stick with the reputable ones like Google AdWords and whatnot. So this is an example of a bogus ad network injection in a database in the JOS content table. Um, so basically, these scripts were located at the bottom of all, all of their articles, and any time uh, a visitor to the website clicked on any links or clicked, even just clicked on the background, a new tab would open up and uh, redirect the user to, guess what, a spam website. And in some cases, it's actually the server itself. Um, this is not as common, but it does happen. But uh, server operating systems can become infected with rootkits just like any other operating system, right? Um, so if, this, if you're unfortunate enough to have this happen to you, the best thing to do is to migrate your site to a brand new server and just have that server completely reformatted. You can clean a rootkit from a server, but the best practice is to reinstall the operating system so you can be absolutely certain that the problem is gone. 
you will want to speak with uh, your hosting provider about security. Um, it's never too early to have that conversation, right? Different hosts have different um, procedures in terms of uh, what they're going to do if your website gets hacked. Um, some hosting providers will clean the hack for you. Others will uh, disable your website until you yourself clean it. Uh, and some hosts don't really do anything at all. Um, so it's an important conversation to have and something that you should, should be wary of, right? And just to reiterate, um, OSEC Heads is a really awesome tool for monitoring your, your virtual private server or, or your dedicated server. And it's uh, one of the best tools that you can have in your arsenal for sure. Now, <clears throat> the hardest part is finding and removing all of the back doors. Um, sometimes attackers will just leave one or two back doors on the server. Sometimes they'll put a backdoor in every single PHP file that they have access to. Uh, sometimes they can be really aggressive. Um, backdoors can be tricky to find too, because um, there's new ones being written every day. There's no one single backdoor that you can, you know, look for. Um, but they do have, uh, you know, some consistency between them. Often they're lodged at the very top of files, um, and other times. Uh, you're going to want to check to see if there's any recently modified files on the server. Often those are backdoors. Uh, if you have access to your uh, server logs, then you can check to see if there's any um, particular files that are getting directly accessed by strange IP addresses in countries that wouldn't normally have any business access in your website. And if you've got uh, an SSH connection to your website or if you've downloaded uh, your files to your local machine, you can uh, search the file content uh, using the grep command for these sorts of uh, PHP functions, which are very, very frequently used by backdoors. Um, now remember, just because a file has a valve base 64 in it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, um, but it does definitely warrant you know, further investigation if you see any of these sorts of things being used. Here's an example of a backdoor lodged at the bottom of a Joomla file. The, the code at the top is legitimate, it belongs there, and the attacker has placed a backdoor at the bottom of the file to maintain access to uh, the website. Even if you've removed the payload, they'll reinfect it, right? So there's some more resources that you should be aware of. Um, site check, uh, as I've mentioned before, will scan your website for malware. Um, unmasked parasites, uh, made by our very own Dennis, is uh, great for checking for spam, malware, and that sort of thing. Uh, Redlegs File Viewer at awsnap.info is very useful, uh, again, for checking for spam. Um, webpagetest.org is useful uh, because it'll load your website and it'll tell you every single file, every single script that's loading. And so it's, very, it's a very good diagnostic tool. Um, if you want to go fully down the rabbit hole, you can download the Burp Suite, which is a web application testing tool. And if you find, uh, you know, some interesting encrypted PHP code on uh, within your site files, you can use uh, DD code or unphp.net to see if it can, you can decrypt it to see what the code is actually doing. So, all right, we fixed the hack. Now what do we do? A lot of people do nothing and just hope the problem goes away. But the fact of the matter is, once the attackers find a website that's easily exploitable, they're going to do it again and again and again and again because they know that most people don't change their passwords. Most people don't update their websites and keep them well maintenance. Um, so, you know, they, they will keep coming back again and again until you take some proactive steps to prevent them from doing that. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is update all of your software, update Joomla, update your template files, update your extensions. Um, and this is, there will be no point at which your website is, you know, fully patched forever, because what is vulnerable, what is considered safe today can be considered vulnerable tomorrow, right? Um, so this is a constant process. Uh, just general everyday website maintenance is the best line of defense that you have against attackers. You're going to want to change all of your passwords too, and make sure that you're using strong, difficult to guess, difficult to brute force passwords. Um, this is one of the leading causes of, of infection next to out-of-date software. Um, and once you, your website has been compromised, it's best to just assume all of your passwords are compromised. So change your Joomla admin panel passwords, change FTP passwords, change your cPanel password, change your database password, 
just change them all just to be on the safe side. You're also going to want to review who has access to your website. You know, how many admin users do you have in Joomla? How many FTP accounts do you have? Who has access to them? Why do they have access to them? For how long do they have access to them? How long do they need access to them for? Um, it's best to have as few admin users as absolutely necessary, as few FTP accounts. Uh, basically, uh, the, the fewer you know, software and whatnot that you have on the, and, and users, the, the less chance there is of something going wrong, right? Um, so, for example, here is a malicious uh, super administrator in the Joomla uh, dashboard. Um, these ones are usually pretty easy to spot because they have suspiciously generic names, in this case, service, Joomla user helper. Um, and so you're going to want to make sure if the uh, attackers uh, have placed any malicious uh, accounts on your website to remove them. Um, sometimes I've seen websites where uh, uh, a website owner has hired a developer to work on their site for some time and they created an admin account for them and then they never removed it when the developer was done working on it. And that is sometimes, you know, even years down the road, the reason why the website gets hacked because that account gets compromised. So you're also going to want to do what we call in the security world, decreasing the attack surface. Um, so again, the, the fewer extensions you have, the better. If you have any old templates on your website that you're not using anymore, remove them. Remove any unused plugins, modules, components. Um, if you have uh, backups of your website laying on your production server, migrate them off, remove them. If you have any development versions of your site on your production server, remove them. Um, just Basically, the, the fewer software, the less software, the better, right? Um, and the less chance of something going wrong in that case. So uh, this is also sort of called the least privilege, you know. Um, the, the, just make sure that uh, have the least amount of stuff so that there's less uh, things that the attackers can possibly exploit, right? You're also going to want to check your laptop and whatever workstation that you use to connect to your website. Um, I've seen clients that have updated all their software and changed all their passwords and they got hacked again the next day because there was a malicious, uh, you know, uh, Trojan keylogger on their computer and the attackers were able to just get the new password and reinfect their site immediately. Um, I would caution you against administrating your, your website from public Wi-Fi networks. Um, if you are going to do that, I would recommend that you, well, I would always recommend that you use uh, encryption, uh, use SFTP or SSH rather than FTP. And you're also going to want to make sure you have regular backups of your website. This is really often overlooked, but it's so important because it's your best tool on a rainy day. Uh, if you're able to just revert your, your website back to a known clean state, then you can just change your passwords and you're good to go. Um, again, need to reiterate, don't store your web, website backups on, uh, on your live server. Uh, we do have a uh, backup service as well. It's $5 per site per month. And uh, this is an example of the, the dashboard that's, uh, that's in use there. And so you can just grab a previous version of your website from, you know, whenever you need. And, uh, you know, deploy it onto your server and you're good to go. You can also do some hardening on your website. Um, any, you know, default settings for any software are considered to be, you know, not optimum. So you can do, this is an example of a HT access file that um, basically prevents PHP from being executed in whatever directory in which it resides. So you can put a file like this in, uh, an images in your images directories or includes directories, places where PHP just doesn't need to be executed. It's really common for attackers to exploit vulnerable image uploading software. Uh, and so if they're able to upload a backdoor into an Im images directory, they won't be able to exploit it. And you're also going to want to use um, a security plugin. I would caution you against uh, installing every single security plugin under the sun. Um, sometimes these plugins will be doing similar things. And um, I've seen people get locked out of their admin panels because of too much security software. So pick one, maybe two, and stick with those. And you're also going to want to make sure that uh, logging is functional. Um, test to make sure that the plugins are actually sending you email alerts when something goes wrong. And last but not least, use a web application firewall. 
this is, I can't recommend this enough. We do offer one called Cloud Proxy. Uh, this is particularly useful if you're stuck using an old version of Joomla. Um, basically, it will virtually patch and protect your website and, and filter out any malicious traffic, and it will prevent your website from DDoS attacks. Uh, I would recommend every website owner use a website firewall. Everyday websites get attacked all the time. And if you're behind, uh, you know, Cloud Proxy or some other uh, web application firewall, then the chances of you getting attacked or, or hacked is way, way, way less. Um, and it's also a uh, fully global content distribution network. And so it will speed up your website performance as well. And uh, that concludes the webinar. So we'll just do a couple of questions here and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, thank you, Ben. So we've had a lot of questions come through. We've only got time for a couple. Um, but one of the first ones that I wanted to ask for, on behalf of our audience is, what do I do if every PHP file is infected? That's a tough one. Um, I have seen uh, attacks where uh, there's some, some kinds of malware that are like really aggressive and they'll infect you know, every single PHP file or every single JavaScript file on, on the site. And a lot of times, um, every single one is a backdoor, and it can take a long time to clean that, and by the time you're done cleaning the website, it's already reinfected. Um, malware is getting more and more aggressive, and it can be really difficult to, to clean that. Um, what I would recommend, um, depending on the complexity of the malware, you can use the sed command with the SSH connection uh, to your website. Uh, and that, that requires a little bit of technical expertise to get that to work properly without breaking your site. Uh, but said can be helpful. Um, but what I might recommend is downloading the website to your local computer and cleaning it, you know, on your laptop and then uploading the clean files back. Uh, you could also restrict access to your website um, using an HT access file so that you only allow your IP address. So any attempt by the attackers to reinfect your website while you're working on it will be thwarted and they will be given a 403 response. Um, it can be really hard to uh, clean an infection like that. Um, rather than just delete the code one by one by one by one by one, which would take forever, uh, it might be better just to download uh, clean, fresh copies of your extensions and your templates and, and Joomla and whatnot and just overwrite the files. Um, but yeah, it, it can be really tricky. Um, we have uh, really awesome tools uh, for cleaning up websites that make stuff like that super easy. But if you don't have those tools, it can, it can be difficult and, and time consuming. And uh, if you're not up to the task, you know, I, would, I might recommend hiring someone to, to uh, clean the site for you. Um, but uh, yeah, the malware can be, can be pretty aggressive. So um, I, I would probably recommend if you're going to clean it yourself, the best thing to do would probably just to restrict, you know, put your website into maintenance mode, allow only your IP address, and then go from there. All right. Thanks, Ben. Um, our next question, um, the audience wanted you to elaborate more on using virtualization to protect yourself. Okay. Um, that's actually super easy um, and, and very useful. I would um, basically, there's a few different tools that you can use, VirtualBox and VMware. VirtualBox is the free one though. So you would start by installing VirtualBox onto your computer. And then what you're going to need is uh, an operating system to install. And I would probably recommend uh, installing Linux because it's free, it's open source, it doesn't require a license key, it's you know, considered more secure generally. Um, so you can, uh, you know, Ubuntu is the most popular uh, operating system for Linux um, and probably the most well supported, I would say. Uh, so you just go to Ubuntu's website and download the uh, ISO file from their website. And then you load the, uh, you open up VirtualBox and you select create a new virtual machine. You select that ISO file from, that you got from Ubuntu's website and then it, allocate whatever amount of space that you want for it and um, it'll install the operating system into a sort of closed container on, on your website. Um, and I would recommend um, once you do that, uh, then you still have to update it and all that sort of thing, but uh, that makes it a lot, lot safer 
for you, uh, especially if we're dealing with, you know, we're dealing with malware here and we don't want your, your site getting, your, your computer getting infected. Um, so I would recommend anyone trying to clean their own site to be working with a virtualized environment. And even if we're not cleaning a hacked site, it's handy to have a virtual machine. Um, if you're ever suspicious about sort of any links or like things that you're clicking on and, and just don't want to take any chances, uh, a virtual machine is, is a really good idea. So in summary, uh, you pretty much just need to uh, download a, a version of Linux and just deploy it into VirtualBox and, and uh, do all your work from there. All right, next question is about SEO. Um, and this person wanted to know how to recover their SEO ranking in Google after a pharma hack. That's a tough one, and that can take some time. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the attackers will inject you know thousands and thousands of, of links, uh, uh, spam links into your website database. And uh, Google, it, it can take a while to regain your SEO ranking with Google for sure. Um, we actually have another webinar that my colleague uh, Alicia did that uh, is more on point with uh, removing uh, spam and pharma hack stuff from Google search results. Um, but it's really important that once you've removed the spam from your website, you're going to want to go into Google Webmaster Tools and uh, basically request a reconsideration from Google. Um, <clears throat> there's two tabs in Google Webmaster Tools for that. There's the, se the security tab, which is going to show any like malware exploits and stuff that, that uh, have been flagged on your site. But there's also another section called manual actions, and that's more to do with spam infections and hacks and pharma hacks and stuff. Um, so what you'll need to do is request a review from Google there. Um, the problem is that it, it, it can take a couple weeks, sometimes longer, for the, the this site might be hacked sign uh, warning to get revoked. Um, because Google needs to re-index your site several times uh, before it can you know, confirm uh, that those links no longer are, are on your site. It's really common to see a really big increase in 404 not found pages in Google Webmaster Tools after a pharma hack, because those are all the links that you deleted from your database and Google's trying to index them and it can't find them, right? Um, so basically it's, it's kind of a hurry up and wait kind of thing with, with uh, getting the SEO ranking back. Um, you just have to be patient and, and make sure that you put in a reconsideration request and then just wait for Google to uh, re-index your site several times. Um, you can also um, manually remove uh, the, the pharma links from within Google Webmaster Tools to get them removed from the search results immediately. But if you have like 10,000 spam links injected, that's going to take you forever. So sometimes it's it's best just to uh, you know wait for Google to re-index your site and It'll go away eventually, but it'll take some time. All right. And our last question is in regards to uh, the site check scanner. The person ran their website in Skype, site check, got a warning, and where do they start investigating? Okay. Well, it depends on what the warning is, but let's assume uh, that site check is flagging a malicious piece of code on the website. Um, that's the part, that's the code that you're going to want to remove, right? So the way that site check works is that it scans, uh, your, the external, you know, HTML code of, of, of your website and it uh, looks for any known pieces of malware that, or spam that are loading on your site. Uh, and if it flags anything, then the piece of code that's displayed at the bottom of site check is the piece of code that you're going to want to remove. So what you can do is, let's say, uh, for example, bogus jQuery malware, if it, if it flags that on your website, that's the script that, the, the script that SiteCheck flags is the one that you need to remove. That's the, the payload. Um, in this case, it would be in your index.php of your, of your template. Um, but if SiteCheck is flagging spam, for example, um, you can basically just look for the contents, the keywords that, uh, site check or, or the scripts rather that site check is flagging and that's the stuff you need to remove. Um, site check is also going to flag anomalies and whatnot. Um, so sort of suspicious code. Um, sometimes if the code is not positioned properly on your, on your site, it can be considered suspicious. Um, but if you're not sure about the, the results that site check is, is bringing up, 
I would recommend uh, you can actually come and ask our support guys uh, on our website in the live chat to, to just for verification. We can try to help. Um, but for the most part, the stuff that site check is flagging is the stuff that needs to be removed. All right, so that brings us to the close of our webinar. I want to thank Ben for all of the helpful information he's provided us today and thank our audience for their participation. Um, we will have a webinar recording and a copy of Ben's slides that will be sent out next week, so stay tuned for that as well as details for our next webinar. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks for joining, everyone.